What's up guys, the Skull Seeker here. So if you haven't seen my video with the comparison between the Giant Otter and North American River Otter Skull, um, go ahead and watch that. That's gonna go into way more detail about these two. Um, this one, I'm just going to do more general about these. And then there's also these three here. So this is going to be a video showcasing my uh, Mustelid collection as well as Mephida Day. So I do have a Striped Skunk Skull here. Uh, for comparison and that's because they used to be um, considered part of the same family um, they had lots of similarities um, such as the um, otters and badgers and stuff still being able to spray just like a skunk they have similar uh, appearances in terms of like short stubby legs and skunks are kind of flat just like badgers are um, they're very similar even the skulls look pretty um, similar uh, but anyway, so I'm going to be including the striped skunk skull in here as well as the, um, weasel family. Um, now, unfortunately I don't have a badger skull. I don't have a pine marten skull. I don't have a fisher skull. Um, and there's a few others, but so what I do have giant otter, North American river otter, striped skunk, mink, and long tailed weasel. So there's obviously size differences in here with um, this one being almost six feet long at the total body length and this one being like a foot and a half or so, um, a little bigger sometimes. Um, but anyway, so we are going to take looks um, at all of these ones. And like I said, the otter video has these really in depth. Um, but anyway, so we'll dive into the video. So first we have the skunk skull here. So it is relatively small, about three inches long. Um, skunks, of course, are not as big as otters. Um, we have a nice set of teeth here. Um, it's very interesting because these guys actually have an interesting spacing of their incisors. They actually leave quite a lot of room in the front. They have a much wider um, snout compared to a lot of other mammals they have like actually gaps in between the teeth here which is very interesting um and i guess i'll show you on uh maybe the i guess giant otter skull since all my others like the mink one's missing a few teeth so it's not as convenient and the others have their mouths glued shut um anyway so we have some nice canines there um the carnassials will take off the bottom jaw so another similar thing between the otter skulls and um, Mephida Day, the auditory bullae here, they're still not very defined. They're, while well, yes, you can see these little circles, they still um, are quite flat and actually blend right into the skull. Um, it's very interesting. Um, once again, so we have the, um, here we have the molars, which have these kind of like flattened parts on the inside, and that's because the, um, jaw fits in here and goes on the inside where we have the top jaw with the teeth on the outside bottom jaw on the inside and they kind of just line up like that and which is very interesting and yeah the otter skulls are the same way um another similarity between these and the um uh, mustelids is the elongated skull so here we have the north american river otter skull so you can see the bottom jaw on both of these is very far forward on the skull. Like we have this whole brain case area protruding back here. That isn't, um, that doesn't happen in a lot of the other mammals. So that's interesting how the um, Mephidae and the Mustelids both have um, that feature. Um, so then if we look at the um, top of the skull, so the skunk has a more defined sagittal crest here. Um, going along here much higher up the otter barely visible you can kind of see um there on the skull but it's just not very defined um on both of these we have a fairly wide uh, top of the skull here in the front and then the skunk has while it does have a large brain case it's still nowhere near as large as the otters so proportionately um, otters and other mustelids still have a much larger brain to body ratio. This one on the skunk is like much uh, smaller due to this protrusion here 
that basically flattens it out and allows for a smaller skull. Well, a smaller brain case. The otter has this huge circle here, um, bigger than like a ping pong ball. Um, kind of the shape of a ball too, a little bit off, but anyway, very large. Um, so then I'll show you the giant otter thing. So yeah, if we look at the giant otter skull, we actually have um, not much room for the incisors. They actually um, are fairly close together and it is missing a tooth here. But you can see they're actually kind of compact. They're actually kind of forced together. There's not nearly as much room as with the skunk. Um, we have the biting feature here. So then we'll take a look at this. So this is how it bites. Um, and then, yeah, we I'll go over this in this video also. With the otter skulls, the giant otter has a much um, smaller, uh, much thinner area in the front of the skull. The North American river otter is a much wider area. And then they both have the massive brain case. Um, although I guess proportionately to uh, skull size, the North American river otter has a larger brain case. Um, the front of the skull is fairly similar um, other than the eye size. So the North American river otter has um, pretty large eyes, but the giant otter has much larger eyes. We have this massive eye hole here, whereas in the uh, North American river otter, it's not quite as big. But they are fairly similar skulls. However, um, they still have quite a lot of differences. That's much more in detail in my other video. That might be all for these, um, for this video, unless I need to bring them back in for other things. Um, with this one, you can see there's actually way less room than the skunk also. Um, even, though these gauze, even though these jaws are glued shut, you can still see. So here on the bottom jaw, we actually only have four incisors that you can see. There are more. However, um, that is, you can see them here now. But like, they're actually kind of um, in the back because there's a deformity when the jaw was growing where we had the um, uh, other incisors actually grow in in the back because there wasn't room in the front. So that's interesting, and that can happen in humans too. Um, but then the top ones are fairly um, normal. They're still a little bit deformed in terms of positioning. Um, we have the large canines and um, molars, the carnassial here. And how they, once again, like just like with the skunk, um, the top jaw has um, the teeth on the outside and the bottom jaw has teeth on the inside, whereas with humans, ours are supposed to be um, they're supposed to go right together um, and line up. And I guess there is one more um, feature I need to show on the giant otter skull. So talking about that um, feature that I just said, we take off the um, bottom jaw here. There we go. And the shape of the teeth. So here we have the carnassial, um, which is very interestingly shaped. All of these are, in fact, because the um, bottom jaw rests right along here, so they kind of just sit in there on top of the teeth right here. So it's a very weirdly shaped tooth. Um, very interesting in terms of shape and everything. It's kind of flat here. It gets really pointy on the outside for tearing. Um, and then, yeah, we have the bottom jaw, which fits into these grooves right here, um, like that. And then fits in right over the teeth right here, like that. So it's very interesting how that works. Okay. Then the mink skull, which sadly is missing, um, I think four incisors or so. Um, okay, it's missing five. Plus I had to glue the bottom jaw together, which was a messy job. Um, it came broken, um, but anyway, uh, Let's see if I can. It's also kind of complicated on this one because the jaw just doesn't really fit in here very well. Um, it had a slight deformity, I think, um, in terms of uh, just doesn't fit very well. Um, that actually might work. Oh, guess not. Um, and yes, I did forget it had one of the um, canines was loose. So that's what just fell out there. Um, I haven't really messed with this skull in quite some time, but once again, we have the large brain case here. Um, so it had a very large brain. Um, we have these really large canine teeth. 
um, that go pretty far down on the skull. Once again, we have the bottom jaw that is um, very close to the uh, front of the skull. There's all this space back here um, behind the uh, bottom jaw for the um, brain case. And then, yeah, like I was saying, it's missing almost all of the incisors there. There's, I guess, two of them, um, which is interesting. Um, but, yeah, it's just how it came, sadly. Um, and so basically, I just got to, like, shove that canine back in there. I could glue it, but it doesn't matter right now. Um, once again, so you can see here the um, tooth here on the underside, which I showed in my other video, if you watch that. This molar here on the very underside is visible on both of, um, like, from above on all these species. Um, I don't know about the skunk. Yeah, even on the skunk. Um, so if we take a look at the skunk, um, it also has the same feature where you can see the molar right there. So we'll take a look at this again. This molar, which is very weirdly positioned in these mammals, um, on the side of the mouth here, which almost all of them are like that. I just find it really interesting how weirdly positioned that is, but it's, yeah, very interesting. Um, then if we compare the mink to the long-tailed weasel, so we actually have a um, very interesting thing here. So the long-tailed weasel has a much, um, much thinner, more elongated skull. Um, it has a massive brain case. Uh, from the side, you can actually see that the top jaw is actually not even um, half of the length of the skull. I mean, the bottom jaw isn't even half of the length of the skull. It's very interesting because it only goes from here to here. And we have this huge um, area back there for the brain case. And then the foreman magnum is actually very large um, proportionately. So yeah, we have this massive brain case here. So that is a very large um, space for the brain to fit in. Very interesting. Uh, we have a small-ish nose. Um, they all have relatively small noses. Um, of course, the North American river otter here has much larger, um, mostly just because of body size, but it's also a little bit wider. But if we compare these two skulls, um, you can see they're kind of similar in shape. Let me move that over. Kind of similar in shape where we have um, this basically elongated shape of the head. However, this one is thinner and the brain case is also thinner. The otter, like I said, has the um, kind of like golf ball or ping pong ball sized um, brain case. This one's more an oval on the uh, long tailed weasel. Um, and then, yeah, we can look at the teeth. So I'll put down the otter skull so I can get a more in focus look at this. Okay. So this one is glued shut and I don't even know what the heck kind of glue this is. Um, all I know is it came this way. Um, probably super glue is what it looks like. Um, but anyway, these teeth are actually, um, very, um, like it's kind of hard to see because of the glue, but you can see that they're actually, um, hold on, let me hold this more still. You can see that they're actually very close together. Once again, where the skunk skull had that huge opening. So with this, um, yeah, you can just see they're very close together, very compact. Um, and then, yeah, we have the um, zygomatic arch here, um, which is very, very thin. And then we have in the skunk, we have also a very, very thin zygomatic arch, it's still a little bit wider proportionately. The giant otter, otter however, has this very fat zygomatic arch. It's very defined. Um, honestly, it doesn't even look like two separate bones. I don't even know. It, it might be cracked there. I don't know. But I, I actually don't think it's two separate bones here. It looks to be fused. I don't know where it's supposed to be split, if it is. But here it actually does look like it is just one um, fused bone. Whereas, like, North American River Otter, you can see it's split there um, right here. 
Anyway, that's interesting. And the North American River Otters is also much thinner in the zygomatic arch. Um, so we'll look at the mink again, if I can get the jaw right. This was probably my least um, uh, well put together skull. It just did not come very well. Um, would have been nice if I had it more um, conveniently uh, wrapped or something. I don't know. I don't even remember if I have all the teeth or not, or if um, I only glued in what I had. I don't know. All I know is it was just not a very, um, I mean, it was cheap. It was probably only like 15 bucks or so. Nowadays, you can get them for like 10 Um Anyway, and then, yeah, we have the, um, this area, the brain case here, which if we compare these two, once again, the, um, long-tailed weasel has a much more elongated skull, like it's, it's thin and elongated, whereas the mink has a wider skull, and the brain case is also much wider, and then, yeah, once again, looking at the side, you can see on the mink, the, um, bottom jaw is actually about half the length of the skull it's a little bit more and then with the long-tailed weasel it is much much less it is not even half it's like a little over a centimeter uh, which is interesting and yeah i really wish that i at some point i might just buy a new mink skull just because this one's in such bad condition i mean the top jaw is actually well uh, the skull on the top jaw is actually perfect it's just the bottom jaw that is really messed up it doesn't even fit into the grooves right it's kind of sad but anyway um and yeah of course it's missing all the incisors which sucks um but yeah anyway so yeah then we have those two yeah it's just yeah i'll just have to buy a new one at some point um yeah, these two are fairly similar. Of course, the size is um, quite different. I guess since this came out, we can look at the tooth. So let's focus on that. Zoom it in. So you can actually see the root of the tooth is very large. And it's that way in um, a lot of mammals and most animals, actually, where they have this really long root and then a tiny little tooth. So this is the canine tooth of the mink. Um... A little bit curved back here at the edge, curves backwards, um, very large root, like I said. Here's from the front, and the back. Then yeah, we can just kind of slide that back in there. Look good as new. Oops, let me zoom back out. There we go, good as new. Um, so then with the skunk skull, we have a interestingly shaped foramen magnum where it's a little bit asymmetrical here, so that's just a deformity within the um, uh, individual. Um, a little bit oddly shaped here. Um, and I guess it didn't show, I don't think, the auditory bullet here. So... Yeah, with both of these, like I said earlier in the video, this is a very um, interesting similarity between the two groups where, yeah, we have these auditory bullae that are kind of flat and it's not very um, prominent there. Whereas with cats and dogs, um, they're much more pronounced. They're much more obvious here. They're, they kind of blend in looking at this. You're like, huh, are those them? Like, I don't know. It's just very awkward because, yeah, they're um just small they're small they're flat interesting um they're just kind of interesting how they're positioned like that anyway i think i'm gonna stop the video there just because um kind of low on space and stuff on my phone um, but also that's a kind of basic understanding of the skulls here um hopefully i covered everything i need to um but anyway, thanks guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.